Hello, my name is Tyler Rockwood. Today I'm excited to demonstrate to you Red Panda's iceberg topics, which are GA as a Red Panda 25.1 and also in public beta in Red Panda Cloud, available on Azure, AWS, and GCP. So for those of you who don't know, iceberg topics are the ability to take the messages that are flowing through your topic inside of Red Panda and upload those into open table format in object storage so that you can bring any of your favorite data warehousing tools to query the data that's flowing through in Red Panda all without having to set up additional hardware. So you can bring BigQuery, Spark, Snowflake, uh, AWS Athena, or any other uh, iceberg compatible query engines to this data. So in this demo, we're going to set up Red Panda. We're going to use Snowflake as both our catalog and as our query engine. And here you can see I have Red Panda set up and it's pointed with tiered storage enabled to this S3 bucket. I've also set up and created a catalog within open catalog and I have nothing here created yet. It's just been set up and pointed to this S3 bucket. And then lastly, I've also set up Snowflake as our query engine. I've authorized it and pointed it to uh, the open catalog instance and also created an external stage for um, that is based on this S3 bucket so it can read the data that is written by Red Panda. So next step here is to enable Iceberg in Red Panda and to uh, point it to the R open catalog instance. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I can do that simply by setting a few cluster configuration properties. So I can set that set Iceberg to be enabled, and then I can tell that the Red Panda that we're using a REST catalog. We also support running just on normal object storage without a catalog integration if you don't have a catalog set up yet. Um, we have a catalog endpoint here from our open catalog instance, and then we have an ICE ID secret credentials, as well as we're telling that we're using OAuth2 as the authentication mechanism. And lastly, we have to pick what uh, instance of a catalog we're using within our open catalog account, which is the warehouse. And we're going to set that to be the iceberg topics demo that I showed you before. We're going to set all of these configuration properties. And now that our configuration has been sexually updated, we need to restart our cluster to pick this up. Okay, I've gone ahead and restarted our cluster. And if I run RPK cluster config status, we'll see that our everything's already set up and good to go. So now uh, to create our data, we need to do two things. We need to um, give Red Panda, we could create a topic with Iceberg enabled. And we also need to give it uh, our schema that we're going to be using for this data. So uh, we support for uh, both Protobuf and Avro for our schema registry integration and for JSON and other formats, uh, we have uh, other ways of getting your data into your warehouse. So let me um, walk through those. So we have first our Protobuf data, which is what we're going to use for this example. We're going to pretend we're a manufacturing company We've got some sensor data um, from each of our factories and machines that's getting uploaded and sent into Red Panda, which then we want to upload into our object storage in Iceberg format so we can query it in Snowflake. So we have three different factories we're going to be writing data from, um, and I'll show you an example of that later. Before we create our topic, we're going to also register the schema in Red Panda's built-in schema registry. And this gives Red Panda the ability to deserialize the messages flowing through our pipeline, read those, and create tables that are query ready in a very nice format where each of the fields in our protobuf message will become a column in Snowflake. So I've gone ahead and created my schema, uploaded it, and now you can see here we're going to create a topic for this data. We're going to call the topic factory sensors data. And to enable Iceberg, I just need to set a single topic configuration property. So we're going to set this Red Panda Iceberg mode. There are four modes. One is disabled, which is the default. It's not on. You can turn on key value mode, which just uploads the raw binary of the Kafka records into our Snowflake uh, open catalog instance and our object storage. So this is useful for JSON or XML or other textual formats that you may be working with. Um, and we have two other modes that integrate with our schema registry that's built into Red Panda. One is value schema ID prefix, which uses the schema, ID, schema wire format in, for the schema registry that will encode in the, a couple, a few leading bytes inside of each message to tell the producers and consumers what value this uh, was encoded, or what schema used to encode this value. And then we also support another mode if you're not using this, the wire format that is called uh, value, or la value schema latest, which is the way of saying, just use the latest 
schema within a subject in the schema registry. For protobuf, we also need to tell Red Panda which message inside our protobuf schema, which is a proto file, to decode with. And we're going to, in this example, use our sensor data message as opposed to the sensor readings. And then we're also going to tell it what schema we used. By default, it'll use the subject naming strategy, but you can override that here. OK, great. Uh, additionally, we're going to set another configuration property, which is going to be the, the partitioning spec to use. By default, Red Panda will partition your data into hourly buckets based on the timestamp within the message. However, if you have your own fields that you want to partition based on, you can do that as well. So we're going to add this Red Panda Iceberg partition spec, which allows you to, based on the full standard of the uh, Apache Iceberg spec, we're going to be able to specify any arbitrary fields that, and transformations on those fields as well. So in this example, we're going to partition based on those factories that I, I mentioned, those three different factories we have first, because a lot of our queries may only touch a single factory. Uh, so we can save a lot of costs on the query side in the data warehouse of pruning files early on so we don't even have to open them um, based on partition spec. And then we're also going to truncate our reading timestamp into hourly buckets after we've partitioned by the factory ID. So I'm going to head and create this topic now with both of these properties set. That's great. Now if I go into here, I can see my Red Panda. I'm going to produce some data into this topic using Red Panda Connect. I have some fake data that I'm generating, and I'm going to run that through a protobuf encoder. I'm just going to encode that as plain protobuf, and then I'm going to write that into our Red Panda topic that we just created. RPK connect run connect.yaml. So now we're producing data into our Red Panda topic. And now Red Panda is going to be able to read that data in the topic. It's going to deserialize that based on the schema that we uploaded. And it's going to create, based on that schema, a table in our open catalog instance and start writing those records at, in Parquet format, a nice columnar compressed version so that Snowflake can query that. And if we refresh here, we'll see that we have this Red Panda namespace now. And within our Red Panda namespace, we have our factory sensors data table that was automatically created. You can see we have factory ID, machine ID, sensor ID, the reading timestamp, and that readings nested struct was created um, with strongly typed fields as well. We also upload some metadata under a Red Panda column name uh, that has the partition, the offset, the timestamp, and other metadata associated with the record here. Now that we have our table created in our catalog, we can go ahead and make sure that Snowflake's able to see that, catalog, that table in the catalog, which it's able to. That's fantastic. And now we can go ahead and create the table from that table in open catalog inside of Snowflake, which gives us the ability to query it. So this is going to go ahead and create that table, which then we can run this describe statement. And we can see that the factory ID, Red Panda, column and all of our other columns that were in our catalog and in our protobuf message have been automatically um, pulled over and now we can query these very easily. So I'm going to run a couple of different queries here just to show you um, how these work and also show you how the uh, custom partitioning is able to um, pr reduce your query times and uh, improve performance. So I'm going to run this query here which basically gives the average value for each of our factories of the temperature readings. So this gives you basically an average value of your temperature in each of these factories. And let's see here, I'm going to also grab this uh, query detail so we can go look at the query plan for this later on. And then I'm gonna also run this query here that will give us the um, max pressure reading of a sensor inside just the US East 2 factory. So <clears throat> with our custom partitioning, this query was able to be a lot faster because it was only able to look at files inside of that US East 2 partition. So if I go ahead and pull open the query profile for this as well, we'll see that we are able to only, we only scanned a little, just under a megabyte of data here for this one. Whereas um, that first query that we ran, we scanned, yeah, three megabytes of data. You can see here, let me see this one, I believe. Yeah, we scanned three megabytes of data, um, which shows just that, we, yeah, we had to re read three times. We had to read all the data for each factory, right? But because of our custom partitioning, 
we were able to only read one partition's worth of data. And let me show that off as we can also in our S3 bucket, we can walk through and look at this. And this is useful for ad hoc queries or if you wanna hook up other tools that can directly read um, these files from S3, like DuckDB, for example, you can do that. So we have here our factory sensor data, data and we have each of these factories, which are these that first partition key that we have. And our second partition key, we have the hourly uh, timestamp here and these are all in a nice little debuggable format for us and you can see here all the parquet data as well and we also have some metadata um, for the open table format the iceberg format here in this other folder but you can easily walk through and debug and see these here in object storage great now I want to show off a couple of the other features that we have one is the ability to evolve the schema within uh, automatically inside of Red Panda, as your schemas change and your data flows um, through your pipelines with new data, we will automatically be able to, de to detect and evolve the schema based on that. So what we're going to use is, um, we're just gonna add these two fields back into our sensor data message. And then we're gonna re-register that. Um, and we can see now we have version two within our subject. And with that latest mode that we're using, it's going to um, periodically check and look for new schemas inside of our schema registry and it's gonna suck that in. And then it's gonna be able to evolve the iceberg format and all the ways that the iceberg um, spec allows you to evolve tables. So now if I restart my pipeline, we'll actually start writing some data with this new format, or with the new fields added. And if I go into open catalog and I refresh, we'll see here I have another schema available inside of my table that has these two extra columns available, error code and the last maintenance timestamp. And we could go through and query those inside of Snowflake as well. Sometimes, however, there may be mistakes as you're doing development or a misconfigured producer could produce bad data into your topic. And we have a solution for that as well. Automatically turned on and um, enabled with every iceberg topic is a dead letter table that we have available. So I'm going to produce some just nonsensical data into our topic that is invalid protobuf. And what happens as Red Panda's translating all of your data into parquet format, if it finds one that it is unable to parse, that is invalid for whatever message format that it's using, Avro or protobuf, then it will send it to a dead letter table. And these get lazily created. So if you go back into our catalog and look, you can see here, there is a new table what that is the dead letter Q for that table. And that gives you the just raw data that it was unable to parse that you can now triage this. You can use it to figure out what went wrong, how this got produced, what is it? And you can um, resolve that, get it back into your data lake house, reproduce it into Red Panda or directly suck that up into your silver layer somehow. So that concludes my demo of iceberg topics for Red Panda. It's 25.1 release. If you're interested in using our cloud, you can go sign up today. It's in public beta. Uh, thank you again for watching. Have a good day.